This is a lab that I would have my students do at any level of chemistry that I would teach. This could be for a regular chemistry class, an honors chemistry class, even we could take it to the AP level. It involves a reaction of a brass screw with nitric acid, and we use it to look at a little bit of solution stoichiometry. Our goal is to take a brass screw, as you might find at the hardware store, and determine the percent composition of copper in that brass screw. Now, you might use this early in the year for solution stoichiometry percent composition. You might use it later in the year when we get to redox reactions. We'll show you the reaction a little later on. We're also going to use a little bit of, you could use a little bit of spectrometry with this. And you can take it to whatever level that you wish. We're going to do a very simple method. If you don't happen to have a, a colorimeter or spectrometer in your classroom, we're going to do it on a very simple level that will allow you to do it with just a simple well plate, a little vial, and just something you can buy at the hardware store. So what I've done is I've gone to the hardware store and I've purchased a few brass screws and I've cut them up into relatively small pieces. I'll put a few here on the table so that you can see those. And I just used the bolt cutters in order to cut the, the bolts apart. What I've also tried is going to a hobby shop, and they now sell sheets of brass for decorative purposes. And you might be able to cut those a little bit easier, maybe with a pair of scissors as opposed to using a bolt cutter. What I want is 0.4 grams of that brass screw. And what I'm going to do is I will put my balance here, zero. And I know that when I use this in the classroom, about two pieces of that brass that I've cut will weigh out to about 0.4 grams. So that's what we're getting there. With that 0.4 grams of brass, we're going to put it into a 10 milliliter volumetric flask, like such. And then we're going to add 6 molar nitric acid to that brass that's in there and let it react for a while. In order to do that, I'm going to have to move over underneath the fume hood so that we don't release the uh, poisonous nitrogen dioxide gas into the air. I take my 6 molar, and what I want to do is I don't want to fill that up to the 10 milliliter line of volume. We'll do that later. We'll bring it to volume with distilled water. I just want enough nitric acid in there, about 6 milliliters, and you'll see that in the write-up, to get the brass starting to react. And as I'm adding this, just know that this may be one part of the lab that you will want your students to set up on one day and let it react in the fume hood overnight so that they can come back the next day. Because it does take about an hour, maybe to an hour and a half, for those brass screws to completely react with the 6 molar nitric acid. Another thing that you should know in the teacher setup of this is each lab partner, or set of partners, or however you run your classroom, each lab group is only going to use 20 drops of this. So one of these vials makes enough for several, several groups. And that's a nice thing about this lab. It's a pretty small amount of material set up for this. And we're going to let that react over here. You don't want to put the stopper on that because it will pop off. I would set that aside in a fume hood. Now, thanks to time-lapse photography, that has now reacted one hour later. And what we've done is I've made one up ahead of time, and we have a sample. That is now our unknown sample concentration of copper 2 plus ions in solution. In preparation for this also, there's my unknown. And we talk to students about if you're working in a laboratory, a lot of what you do is comparing unknowns to knowns. And so we have a set of standards here. And the kids are allowed to set up their own standards and then make a comparison to make a judgment. So what I've done is a serial dilution of one molar copper nitrate. And all we did was we took the copper nitrate, I put 20 drops of the copper nitrate with no water in the first well, 
and then 19, 18, 17, all the way down to one drop of copper nitrate down here with 19 drops of water. And so there's my set of standards upon which I can compare my unknown solution to. Okay. One of the things we have to be careful of, though, is all of the volumes in that serial dilution are 20 drops. If I try to compare this vial to those 20 drops, as I look down through it, because the depth is different, I'm looking through more ions, it's going to give me a darker looking solution. So what I need to, be make, to make sure of is that I use the same amount of drops of my unknown as I have my known standards. Therefore, I make a true comparison of colors based on that. I also tell my students that, and usually I'll carry in a box of some of the common Raisin Bran, Kellogg's, uh, Frosted Flakes, something, and pour some milk on it and tell them that's my cereal dilution uh, for the day. So they, that's, all right. So I'm going to take, and I want to put this in the corner. I want 20 drops of my unknown. So that's the 20 drops of my unknown. And you can see I didn't use very much of that. So if I wanted to, and you would make sure all the lab groups knew how much mass of brass we started with, I could pass that to the next lab group, and they could use that. So we haven't used very much. And therefore, disposal also, it's nice for that, because you really don't have a whole lot of materials putting the heavy metals down, down and in, making sure we have to take care of those. OK. So I've got 20 milliliters of known, uh, unknown in that well. And now what we're going to do is, just like a colorimeter would work, only our colorimeter for this in particular one is going to be our eye, and we're going to compare to see which one of these wells that that compares to. And it's interesting, when you see kids working in a lab group, they will fight for their well. If they're arguing with their lab partner, they will go back, no, it's four, no, it's five, no, no, bring it over here in this light, let's look here. And they will really get into this to fight for which one that it is. And so what we'll do is we will slowly Na, 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 na. And then what I think we would do is we would say, okay, I think that that looks like B5 well, okay? And we'll make a judgment on that. And with my lab partner, I now, my goal is once I do that, I want to take B5 and I'm going to figure out what ratio I have in there since I know that that is... Uh, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12. That's my 10 to 10 ratio. I've got 10 drops of copper 2 nitrate, and I've got 10 drops of water in there. So I've split the 1 molar 50-50. That should give me uh, my 0.5 uh, as we go through this. And so that would be the one that I would base my percent concentration on. Okay. If it's really, really close, a technique that you could use, is to actually take and make the same dilutions on the two wells by my known. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take B5 out of here. I wouldn't recommend that the students do this, but for our purposes right now, and I would have them put that in there. And maybe they were arguing over B5 and B4. So I would take B4 out and put it next to it. And I'm going to use a little white Then I could make the judgment very carefully, looking in good light. And I'm going to stick with B5 and use that setup as a confirmation that we're using B5. Okay? At this point in time, we're going to go to the board to look at this reaction. In my brass screw, I've got a certain percent of copper. And so the copper is going to react with the nitric acid to make copper 2 nitrate, which are aqueous, releasing the copper 2 plus ions. It's also making the reason that you want to do it in a fume hood, really this reaction would make nitrogen monoxide gas. But the minute that nitrogen monoxide gas reacts with oxygen, it turns it into NO2 gas. And that's the brown poisonous gas that you see evolved from the reaction. Once we've liberated the copper 2 plus ions, we can look at them, compare them. Now I can make a distinction as to what is the percent of copper that I actually have in my well. 
Okay, so we'll come back to this. Now that we know the mass of brass and we know which well, we can continue on and calculate and show the calculations for determining the percent of copper in the brass. Okay, so now we've completed the brass in, in uh, six molar nitric acid lab, and we're ready to show some calculations of how do we arrive at the percent of brass in that, a percent of copper in that brass screw. We weighed out the mass of brass, which came out to 0.44 grams. We used well B5. That was where our color match was, in which we lined up our standard with our unknown. Considering the fact that we used a standard solution of copper two nitrate as one molar, if I multiply that by the ratio of the well that I chose, 10 of those drops in that well were copper two nitrate, 10 were water. That gives me a 0.5 molar copper two plus ion concentration. If I talk about that as being 0.50 molar and I want to solve for the grams of copper in there, I know that 0 0.50 molar, moles per liter, multiplied by 63, the molar mass of copper, grams of copper per mole. I know that one liter is 1,000 milliliters. And I know that I had a 10 milliliter sample to begin with. That's important. You have to make sure that you use whatever number you use for the volumetric flask that you might have used in your class, because that was the concentration initially. That comes out to 0.32 grams of copper that reacted with the nitric acid. If I take and consider the fact that that came from the 0.4 four grams of brass to begin with, that gives me approximately 73% copper in a brass screw, which is about what it is.